Calling it fried rice syndrome is probably a little bit racist. Allow me to explain. Why do they call it fried rice syndrome if everybody dying, all the cases are eating pasta. They want to blame it on the rice. Exactly, exactly. So we're here to talk about what you guys may have heard on TikTok, on Instagram, on YouTube as fried rice syndrome. This is a the bacteria that is sometimes on rice and also pasta and a bunch of other things that can get you sick and potentially is fatal depending on how much you eat. It's called reheated rice syndrome and it's actually pretty dangerous. Let's talk about it. The danger really isn't in the reheating part. It's in that precarious time between the cooking and the storing that I always love to talk about. Usually I'll just tell y'all reheat to a serve safe temperature. It's usually 165 for leftovers and you should be good to go. The problem is in the type of bacteria that grows in leftover rice. It's called Bacillus cereus, or B cereus for short, B so cereus. Uh, it's actually heat resistant. Essentially, no amount of reheating, nuking, microwaving, steaming, whatever is going to save you if that bacteria did happen to grow in your rice. Guys, we are referring to Bacillus cereus. That is the bacteria that causes food poisoning. So I'm going to explain why. And I got the receipts to show why it actually probably, if anything, and I don't want to throw pasta under the bus, but should be called old pasta syndrome, or we should just call it food poisoning. So anyways, please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pot Boys as we get into this. But one thing that <laughs> you don't have to worry about is smile sauce, guys. It's sold out online right now, but check it out. We're going to be restocking soon. From Sichuan to Sicily. Listen, guys, uh, why do they call it fried rice syndrome? If anything, first of all, it's unfair to fried rice. They should have called it old fried rice syndrome. They wouldn't, shouldn't even call it fried, like just old rice syndrome. But even then, it's not fair because almost all the cases documented in the West have been people dying from eating old pasta. Yeah, so we're going to go through it, guys, because you guys have probably heard about it. But it should probably be called rotten rice syndrome or rotten pasta syndrome, okay? That's actually the more accurate terms. But of course, I don't know. Did it get racialized? Guys, you let me know. Is it kind of anti-Asian to call it fried rice syndrome? Because I was like, fried rice syndrome? I eat a bunch of fried rice. How am I going to get sick? Well, you know, it's a little bit easier to blame it on the Chinese. Let's yeah. be honest. You know, this is better than I don't want to take the heat. Yeah. Well, you know, if you call it pasta, that's really going to hit the pasta industry kind of hard. And, you know, we can't afford that. But anyways, guys, let's talk about August 2003. Five children in a family get sick. Four of them get really sick. One of them, unfortunately, passes away from eating pasta. Guys, the one case that everybody quotes is a 20-year-old college student in Belgium dies from eating spaghetti that he left outside of the fridge for five days. Mm. Again, spaghetti, and then there was lasagna the first, or pasta salad. Next one, multi-organ failure in America caused by lasagna, all right? So all these big cases that take place in the Western world are actually involving pasta, not rice. Right, now, but now, I guess, is it because, and this is to play devil's advocate, in the West, most people eat pasta as the carb, whereas in the East, the primary carb is rice. Yes, I'll get into that. There is some logic, but let's just, let me keep going. Let me keep going. In America, there are about 63,000 cases of Bacillus cereus, okay, this bacteria case, a year. Not a lot of people die in America, but a lot of people get sick, all right? Now, if you go to China, this is recorded cases, and remember, China is four times the size and eats 10 times the amount of rice per capita, which is probably actually like 30 times the amount of rice in total. Guys, there was 8,000 cases over 10 years. So actually the rate of reported cases, now you could say that there's some unreported because it's China, right? Maybe they don't report everything, but it's really not that bad. Or maybe their stomachs are strong because look at what they eat over there. They eat all types of things. Well, a little ribbon of rice ain't compared to what they put in their stomachs. I'm not saying China's perfect and I'm not saying China's better than America at everything. But as far as recorded cases, it's really not that bad. All right? So why did they name it that, man? Because it sounds like they're just trying to blame everything that's related to uh, toxins or, you know, weird foods, bad things related yeah. to food. On the Chinese. Okay, all right. First of all, <clears throat> Snowvid-19, that, that did start in China. But anyways, guys, fried rice syndrome was, I apparently, they called it that because the early documented cases were linked to cooked white rice that were not refrigerated. Now, are these cases from Asia? Are they in America? Because to me, guys, out of the 63,000 
cases of this bacteria in America, how much of do you think that is rice and how much do you think is attributed to pasta, considering that in America they probably eat more pasta than they do rice? White people, which make up the majority of America, but to be honest, even like I think a lot of black people, they don't have rice cookers. That's how little they yeah. eat rice. I don't know a single white person that's not a sushi chef or like an otaku that has a high-end zojirushi rice cooker or a kaku. Yeah. I don't know any exactly. of them. Exactly, guys. So so to me, what I'm saying is, and we're going to get into the comment section about all this and then like the Reddit posts and stuff like that, but I guess I was just making the case, and it's not that I want to put the blame on pasta and throw Italian food under the bus because I love Italian food, but it is unfair and inaccurate compared to the proportion of rice cases to call it fried rice syndrome. Like that's crazy to call it fried rice syndrome when the only documented earlier cases of people getting sick maybe were from white rice or pasta. And then most of the most horrible cases of death in, a, in the Western world are from pasta. Yeah, it would have been crazy if they called it fly lice syndrome with the accent, with the fly lice. Like just call it rotten pasta syndrome, rotten rice syndrome. I would take rotten rice syndrome. That's fine, because rotten... Still but I think it. maybe rotten people are think, looking for some more visceral, like visual marker of rottenness. Because this is like, I guess, imperceptible bacteria. Why right? are you trying to bring down the fried rice industry, David? Fried rice I, is I just, one of the best things you can eat. At the end of the day, the man, me. it's easy for them to blame it on Asians or blame it on Chinese at the end of the day. I'm not saying that there's not some validity to it. I know that rice has a really high surface area. It's very yeah. moist. It's the yeah. perfect breeding ground for these was a bacillus serious serious things but like so are a ton of other things and they never get pointed out so there is some science behind it um other people were talking about fermentation interestingly enough once the rice begins to ferment you don't uh there's no more chance for bacteria to grow on it that's why like alcohol keeps for a really long time like sakes mm. and things like that because um the bacterium has to have a certain scientific like canvas. Well, it has to have like a lot, like, yeah, a lot of uh, water or something. I yeah. don't know. Like the fermentation like kills a lot of like germs, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't provide that. Well, also, not all bacteria is bad for you. Obviously, there is bacteria that is good for your gut, and then there's bacteria right. that can kill you. So, not all bacteria is the same. There was a lot of people being like, dude, we come from a culture where we eat old rice all the time. Whether mm. we let it out sitting out for five hours, it's in the rice cooker. We might eat it three days later. I never died. I'm 75 years old. Um, how much do you think it is like... You, you can find a scientist to be freaked out about everything in 2024. Yeah, listen, um, I, I, I just wouldn't eat old food that's been sitting out too long, but I know a lot of people who have eaten day-old or fried rice, maybe even two-day-old rice. Three-day-old, bro. Right? I'm not saying we can put an exact number, though. I think you are risking it if it's past two days. Yeah. I think you're risking it. And, but and I don't think you should keep your rice out on the kitchen counter. You should put it in the refrigerator for sure. Oh, yeah, sure. in the fridge, I think things, it, it slows everything down. You could do it for like weeks or whatever. But I'm saying outside in the danger zone, which is room temperature, like just don't be stupid with it. But like overall, people, I've eaten two-day-old rice in room temperature before. I'm not saying I would do it purposely. It doesn't taste good. Yeah, I wouldn't do it purposely for I, that. But if I if you had to survive, you do what you do. Um, this person said the refrigerated cooked rice is safe for three to five days. You just need to confirm it with a visual smell and taste test. In the sense of like, just eat a tiny piece yeah. to get a sense of it and use your smell as well because a lot of bacteria will begin to smell. Dude, it's just like spoiled milk, man. You know, you can't always look into the milk carton before you pour it out, right? But if you think it's overdue and it's like crusty at the top, you open it up, smell it, and if it's not sour and it still smells like milk, then you might be able to drink it. I'm not telling you to do it, but I'm just saying it is probably safe. People are talking about bento boxes all around Asia at 7-Elevens and Japan at Lawson's. Japan is famous for being very clean. But guess what? They got the rice in the bento boxes yeah. out in the Lawson's. It is true that when you're at the Lawson's, generally it's either in the cold section or a little bit of a warm section. Though. Yeah, listen, again, I'm not saying that cases in Asia do not exist. Of course, people eat 20, 30 times the amount of rice as a country in Asia. So of course there's going to be some cases. But what I'm saying is their death rate is not even any higher. Yeah, they might have stronger stomachs too. I don't know how it is like... Is, is it like a peanut allergy where when you're exposed very young, you build up this like strength and tolerance to it? Yeah. I mean, over 10 years, I'm just saying the statistics show only five people died over 10 years. It's, 
There was even some white seen. people chiming in saying, being like, this young generation is absolutely ridiculous, man. I live till 95. I keep my butter out on my counter. I keep all types of breads out on the counter. I cook some food. Maybe I put it in the fridge. Maybe I don't. I never died. All y'all are wimps. Everybody's weak. And this is like, you know, of course, there, it's true. And there's a lot of older people in the West. I'm not even talking about Asian immigrants. Uh, I'm talking about like old white people that are really mad at the current state of things. Yeah, right? and I think, guys, let's be honest, like something that a lot of people are not thinking about is your ability to fight off this bacteria has to do with your age, your size. Obviously, the in one of the cases where the five kids got sick, the youngest daughter died, unfortunately. Right, because you usually she is children smallest, don't have very strong immunity. Yeah, and I'm saying the older ones survived. And, and so I'm saying you have stronger immunity. Also, if you're healthier, you could probably fight it off more. Okay. Also, it depends on how much you eat. Because I'm saying I've everybody's eaten some moldy bread before. I did it on accident where I literally ate something and I look back on it and I look at like some slices. I was like, oh shit, this is, has spots. But I didn't die and even get sick of it. The only time I ever really had food poisoning was doing was eating uncooked fish that I tried to cook myself. And that was actually a day before our sister's wedding. And then I was just vomiting and pooping like crazy. That was terrible. You got hit by the bacillus. You remember that? No, the I don't know if it was bacillus, but it was one of the three main bacteria that will get you. Listen, guys, if you are more of a, a medical professional working in a STEM field, you're probably more familiar with the exact bacterium and, and the whole process and the breakdown, the low, middle, high versions of it. Ultimately, it's this, man. I just think a lot of people nowadays, they're trying to create content that there is some science backing it, but they want to go viral. And if they want to go viral, they got to sensationalize it. And they're going to tell you that you're going to die if you left your rice out overnight and you eat it in the morning. Just like these TikToks, the TikToks, they want to go viral in a moderate scientific in the middle equation where you're explaining different immunity strengths and bacterium strains and protein moisture growth surface level areas, diameters, radiuses. It's not going to hit. So people just go with the... The fried rice syndrome's gonna kill you. Yeah. And then they go viral on TikTok, and that's what they want. That's they get the dopamine. Oh, I went viral. I went viral. <laughs> do you think to wrap this up, David? Do you think how similar? How much do you think of an impact the Smoman nineteen the pandemic had on this conversation about like if you're healthy, you can withstand a lot more, and that all these things are true. That it's, it is bacteria. Guys, that is on rice. It's on pasta. It's on. It's a real bacteria. Yeah, room temperature generally is not a yeah. good temperature for uh, keeping food safe. Yeah, they call it the danger zone for a while. But, but that because just there's a few cases of things happening, does that mean that it's something that everybody should be worried about? You know what I mean? Where it's like, remember when people thought like, oh, uh, uh, was it socially distant from 10 feet, five feet away? You know, everybody right. wear a mask. Everybody, when you're wearing a mask, when you jog with oh, each other. Oh, you got an N95, but yeah. the N95 prevents your intake, yeah. but then the exhale or, has or, all this. I mean, there's a case where I remember reading about this as a kid and mom got worried because she was like, hey guys, I just read a case about this kid who got scratched by a rusty fence and then they got a flesh eating disease. So you have to watch out every time you touch a rusty thing. First of all, watch out anytime you touch something rusty, period, yes. But if you do touch something rusty and you're not cut, you're probably not going to die either. You yeah. know what I mean? I think, to be honest, and this, you know, some people are going to disagree with this, I think a lot of people know a lot of like obscure knowledge nowadays, whether it's about conspiracy theories, their favorite video game, or their favorite movie series, and they know 17 different conspiracies on Game of Thrones, when realistically the writers didn't even write those conspiracies in in the first place because they were just trying to get it done and make the money from the show. So now you're spending all this time knowing conspiracy theories that the writer themselves didn't even concoct in their own mind because if you guys know about content creation, a lot of people like read into things that the original writer, or IP, you know, intellectual property creator didn't even think of. And then you don't know science. You don't know basic STEM. And basic STEM is conditional on a lot of different factors. It's multifactorial. So now you're seeing a TikTok that sounds kind of good. You know, somebody articulately put an argument yeah. in a lopsided uh -huh. way. And now you're getting tricked. Exactly. Because you spent all your time thinking about the trivial thing instead of the base level fundamental but, things. You need to just be a smart, common sense person. And you know what's funny? You know what's funny is that I don't think a lot of people who have cooked tons of rice for years or chefs are worried about this. 
I think it's young people who have not cooked a lot of food in their life. I can imagine, think about it, that you are just starting to live on your own. Like, let's say you're a 17, 18 year old, you're going to college for the first time and you're thinking about cooking on your own, like in your dorm or something. You're gonna hear this story about bacillus cereus and fried rice syndrome. You're like, oh my gosh, I don't wanna cook rice anymore. But if you've been eating rice for 25 years and you cooked it your own, you're like, somewhere along the way, I've eaten rotten rice, guys, and I've been fine. So right. it's just like when you are inexperienced and you hear this headline and this story, then it is kind of fear mongering. You know what I mean? And again, I'm not saying it doesn't exist. These bacteria are true. I've been hit with food poisoning before, but I'm just saying you guys are tripping and calling it fried rice syndrome. It's rotten pasta syndrome, man. If anything, you should just be worried about refined carbohydrates more than, you know, yeah. poisoning yourself and killing yourself. Yeah. Stay fit and drink vitamin C. All right, guys. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Was it racially charged to call it fried rice syndrome instead of a different name? Because I think that was a pretty bad name to call it. So I just want to call it out. Again, I'm not a snowflake. I'm not super easily sensitive and offended by these things. But I call it out when I see it. So, But yes, keep your food fresh. And especially for kids, younger kids. I mean, because yeah. their immunity is not as strong because they're still developing. <laughs> Logical. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. And until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.